Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope you will consider subscribing. So today I have another canning video for you guys. I am in the mood for summer and nothing says summer like fresh strawberries and lemonade. So today we're going to be canning up some strawberry lemonade concentrate. This recipe comes from the Ball Fresh Preserving website. It is so easy to do and it is wonderful to have on your shelf. It's absolutely delicious. Not to mention, it is totally gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. Now, I will say, just as an FYI, when I was testing this recipe, um, part of their instructions are to skim off the foam. I didn't do that. When I was testing the recipe, I added lemon pulp because I love pulp in my lemonade. Um, so I didn't really do that because I didn't want to lose the pulp. So that's what you see on top there. So if you are a person like me who likes the pulp from the lemons, um, you're not going to want to do the step of skimming the foam or you will lose some of your pulp. So it just looks a little bit different in the jar, but it's not going to hurt anything. It's totally fine and it's really delicious. The other question I know I'm going to get is, can I strain out the strawberry seeds? And I'm sure that you can. I didn't. It's just an extra step to do, and I don't feel like it's necessary. They don't bother me. But if you are someone who can't have the strawberry seeds um, or you don't want them, you don't like the texture, um, they puree up pretty fine. I don't really notice them too much. But um, if you're a person that does not like that or... Um, you can't have them for some reason, I'm sure you could strain them out. I didn't do that, so I'm not going to do that step, but you certainly could once you puree your strawberries. So really easy stuff here. You're going to need six cups of whole strawberries that you are going to puree. I went ahead and pureed mine. Now, when I went to the grocery store to get what I needed to do this, my fresh strawberries didn't look so great. So I'm just using frozen. So this is another common question that I get in canning. Can I use frozen? In this case, yes, they puree beautifully. And actually, I like this because it takes the guesswork out of measuring uh, six cups of berries. It tells you on the back of the um, packaging how many cups that you have. So that made it easy. The other thing too is they're already cleaned and hulled for you. So if you're using fresh berries, you want to hull your berries, wash them really well, and then puree them. If you're doing frozen, I defrosted mine. I highly recommend that. Trying to puree frozen strawberries can be kind of difficult unless you have a really high powered blender or food processor. You can use either one for this. I just used my blender to puree my strawberries. So um, there's that. Then you're going to need four cups of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now, that's probably the hardest part of this whole process is squeezing all those lemons. It took me about 18 lemons to get the four cups, but that's gonna vary depending on the size of your lemons and how juicy they are. So um, I have four cups of fresh lemon juice, freshly squeezed. I know I'm gonna get asked, can I use bottled? There's no reason why you couldn't. You're not gonna get that same fresh lemon flavor if you do, but there's technically no reason why you couldn't. If I was going to use bottled lemon juice, I would just make sure that I used an organic one that doesn't have anything else added. It just isn't gonna be the same or have the same fresh flavor as using freshly squeezed lemons. So I highly recommend taking the time to freshly squeeze your lemons. Um, and then the only other thing we need is some sugar. It does take a lot of sugar, so if you are someone who is watching your calories or you can't have sugar for some reason, I will leave a link in the description box as to um, how to use sugar substitutes in canning, so you can reference that if you need that. And I don't see any reason why you couldn't decrease the amount of sugar you're using here. Um, strawberries and lemons are certainly fine for canning without any sugar, so there's no reason. They may not, um, the concentrate may not last as long on the shelf. The color may not stay as vibrant. Sugar does help with color retention, and it does help with the longevity of things. When you do jams and jellies, jams and jellies where you use full sugar, tend to last on the shelf longer than those that have reduced or no sugar. But you can definitely reduce the sugar and you can also use a sugar substitute. 
I will leave links in the description box below. So all we need to do is throw everything in a nice size pot. So we're going to throw in our pureed, six cups of pureed berries. That is measured before pureeing them. Four cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and we need six cups of sugar. I know, a lot of sugar, but it's totally delicious and totally worth it. So anyway, I'm gonna bring you in close. Um, so we're just gonna put all that in a pot. We do not want to boil this. It specifically says do not boil. You just wanna bring it up to about 190 degrees. So I'm going to use a candy thermometer to make sure I don't go too far, but you don't wanna boil it. Once you get to the 190 degrees, you're gonna skim off your foam, and then we are all set for canning. So really super easy stuff here. Okay guys, here we go. Just add your strawberry puree. And we are going to add six cups of granulated sugar. And then we need four cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I have my heat on about a medium high. Ooh, I've got everything stirred together. So now I'm just going to add my thermometer. Keep an eye on the temperature. And when I get up to 190 degrees, we're all set for canning. So Okay guys, we are almost to 190 degrees. I just wanted to bring you in close so you could see what I was referring to as far as the foam. See, it gets kind of like a white foam on top. They recommend that you skim that off. That's up to you. Like I said, if you leave the pulp in from the lemons, you're not gonna wanna do that because you'll lose your pulp. But uh, I didn't include the pulp this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and skim that off and then we are all set to can things up. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. I went ahead and heated my lemonade mixture up to 190 degrees as they said. I skimmed off some of the foam. I think it's hard to get all of it, but I did skim some of it off. Um, I have three um, quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my steam canner. If you are water bath canning, make sure you have enough water in your canner that will cover your jars by an inch once you have them filled in in your canner. We are going to be canning in pint jars. The instructions for this recipe from Ball are in pint jars. So I can't give you any processing times for quarts, but, but you can certainly go down to smaller size jars. You will still process for the same time, which is gonna be 15 minutes. So it's totally fine to go down to the eight ounce jelly jars if you don't wanna can this in pints. Um, we are going to be filling our jars to a quarter of an inch headspace and processing for 15 minutes. Okay, I have two hot jars. I did wash my jars and set them aside. I kept them hot in a sink full of hot water. Make sure you start with hot jars or you could have some experience, some thermal shock since what we're putting in them is going to be fairly hot. The water in my canner is also at 180 degrees. So we're just gonna go ahead and ladle in our concentrate to a quarter of an inch headspace. Okay, once you're at your headspace, typically we debubble, but this is all liquid, so there's nothing to debubble, really. So I'm gonna take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims, make sure nothing interferes with a good seal. Then we are going to add our lids and then our band to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Look how pretty that is. Okay guys, I got exactly six pints. Ball states you should get seven. I have no idea how you would get seven out of that, but I got exactly six, which is what I got last time. So we can go ahead and put our lid on our canner. Again, if you are water bath canning, make sure you have enough water in your canner to cover your jars by at least an inch. We're gonna crank up our heat. Once you are at a full boil, if you're water bath canning, you can start your processing time. For those of you steam canning, use the dial gauge on your canner. When you are in your green zone, you can start timing. Then we are going to process for 15 minutes. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you how beautiful this is. And I'm gonna give you some great ideas on ways to use it. Okay guys, we are all done. I processed my jars for 15 minutes and then let them sit for about five. And there you go. Look at that beautiful color. Just scream summer, doesn't it? So pretty. And it smells amazing. So to reconstitute it, all you have to do is add one 
part of your concentrate, so one jar of your concentrate, to three jars of water if you want it to be lemonade. But the sky is the limit. You could do, use this for all kinds of things. You could add it to iced tea and you'd have strawberry lemonade iced tea. You could add it, um, instead of adding water, you can add ginger ale, and it's kind of like a punch then. Um, you can also add it to Prosecco, and you have an instant strawberry lemonade mimosa. Um, you could also add it to a bottle of Moscato, and you could have strawberry lemonade uh, wine, a strawberry lemonade wine cooler. Um, you could also use sparkling water to have it more like a strawberry lemonade soda. So lots of options, lots of delicious ways to use it, and it's great to have on your shelf. You saw how easy it was. You'll be enjoying it all summer. So I went ahead and reconstituted the last jar I had on my shelf. So I can show you what it looks like after you reconstitute it. I gotta have a lemon slice in there, of course. See how pretty? A few strawberry seeds in there. You can see a little bit of my pulp because I left pulp in the batch that I made prior to this. So let's taste it and see how it tastes. It's absolutely delicious, you guys. So refreshing, great for summer, so pretty and very tasty. Thanks for coming along with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Give me a thumbs up. The thumbs up are becoming more important on YouTube to get videos circulated. So show your favorite YouTubers some love and like their videos, and I will see you next time. Cheers!